Okay, so this one is assigning keyframes from an editor utility widget using a data table. Um, parts of this can be subbed in and out, but I just wanted to show um, this one part as an idea. So I made a simple data table, assuming that the row name here would be uh, your frame number, and I'm just using the position. I just created like a generic one. That's why there's all this extra stuff, but just to show that there could be other information in here. Um, you may have rotation or something like that for um, camera tracking data. And then the idea being that once you have um, this widget that we're going to create, you would just hit the button that would assign all the keyframes from that table to the, the location here. So um, inside this editor utility widget, which is essentially what you're going to create, um, I'll also kind of show that logic, but a couple things to make this, you definitely need to have editor scripting utilities and sequencer scripting ticked on. If you don't have those on, uh, you won't get options to some of these nodes. Um, so what we're gonna, what you do is you would just create an edit editor utility widget, um, which I've already done here. I just made a simple button for this. Um, you don't even need this. You could actually just right click it and do run and not, not worry about the button, but I kind of wanted it. Um, so that way I could just trigger it at will. Um, and so then I'll kind of go through the logic here of what, what we have going. So. Uh, the first thing I'm doing is I'm getting the current level sequence, uh, and then I'm just assigning that to a variable. Then I'm kind of setting up the parameters of uh, the, with the uh, data table, what I'm going to use. So I'm actually specifying a hard number for the number of frames here. Uh, if in your case, you might just get the total number of frames. However, I, I don't know how many you're actually talking about. If it's you know 60 minutes of frames, maybe you want to break this into chunks and do it in... in uh, in, in parts, and so maybe you would want to set a first frame and a last frame and do it in chunks. Um, and then I'm just, for each of these frames, uh, for each thing in the data table, I'm just setting a, uh, a, a vector for the position. Then this is kind of the meat of this, this loop here, so I'm actually going to um, use the level that I have currently selected and that I stored earlier. I'm going to get possessables. Now, if you actually have um, this track set as uh, spawnable, then you would do get spawnables. But in this case, that would be possessable. Um, from there, you're going to find tracks by type. The type of track for this particular um, thing is actually a movie scene 3D transform track. Uh, I couldn't figure out a good way to find out what track I needed other than by some trial and error. So if you're using different things, like some of them are more obvious than others. Um, but um, yeah, depending on what you're doing, you may need master tracks. Master tracks are things like camera cuts, shot tracks. If those are the things you're manipulating, you may need to use master tracks. In this case, I can just use regular tracks. So uh, just so you know what I'm talking about, find master tracks by type would be the uh, other option for that. So I'm getting those and then I'm setting them to a variable. I didn't actually need to do this, but I was trying to do some other filtering. So, um, but you can, you can skip that. But then the next thing, the kind of the progression is track section channels, right? So possessable track, those are, that's kind of the progression that we're looking for here. Uh, the section I don't, necessarily know if there's different sections within this type anyway. I think sections are for things like camera cuts and things like that where there's actually hard section breaks. Um, but in any case, you still need to get it. Uh, and then the, we're going to get the channels. So what I'll do is uh, just I'll reroute this and um, I'll also set the number of frames just to one just so you can see what this actually prints out. So if I hit assign, I get location X, Y, Z, rotation X, Y, Z, scale X, Y, Z, and weight. So there's actually 10 things I can set for this uh, thing here. Um, and so that's what I'm looking for. So I know in my case, I'm only using the first three because we're doing, um, I'm just doing the position. So if I hook this back up, that's why I'm using this, um, when I use the array, I'm actually just um, doing the first three, right? So for each index, I'm doing something different. Uh, I'm sure I could write this into functions and make this neater, but I wanted to just show you the idea. So for the first one, 
uh, for actually all of them, we're doing the same thing. I'm just changing the position X, Y, and Z here. Um, so I'm going to, the end goal is to do this add key, right? So I could just, you know, that's what I want to do. So in order to do this, I need to use this cast uh, in order to, to get the target to match. Because if I just like try and hook this up, it's not actually going to um, let me do it with just the object reference. So I have to do this cast to move in scripting float channel and then add the key. For uh, my time, I'm using the current frame, which is what I set in the very beginning here. So each frame, it's gonna set the frame and, and just kind of increment. So assuming that your frames are the order in your data table, this should be fairly logical. And then uh, that's for the frame time. And then I'm just using this new value and that's it. And then when I run this, it should run through it and plot all the the keyframes. So if I go back and I have this running and I hit it, I should get all my keyframes. Something you'll notice is that it doesn't actually do anything at first. And I think this is because it's similar to the auto keyframing, where as soon as I add um, a keyframe, everything pops in and everything works just fine. Um, but if, and I think this is again, I think it's similar to when you have auto keyframe turned on. So like if I, if I have it on, and I go and I move this guy around, it doesn't actually do anything, you know, no matter where I am. However, if I, as soon as I add the first keyframe and then I go somewhere and then I move it, then you'll see it plotting. Um, so I, I believe that's kind of the, the logic behind this. So um, if, uh, well, let me just see if I turn that on. Does that, yeah, it doesn't have an effect. <laughs> so I wasn't sure. But so if you just add the first one, then you'll get you you know it will work from there. Um, so hopefully that uh, kind of makes sense and and will give you some some ideas on how to tackle this to read it from your data table. Again, depending on how many you're doing, um, this loop and this logic may be kind of <laughs> intense. So you may want to um, do it in chunks of frames and not just try and do like three hours worth of keyframes all at one time. Um, but this should give you the logic to kind of get going on this and, and uh, print this from a data table if you'd like.